don't we all need a laugh now and again? It's Saturday morning. Um, but it's a, a comedy with a message. Um, we are going to have a screening of the web series Friday Night Bites. Um, and don't worry if you're thinking, oh my God, I don't have time to watch a film. It's eight minutes long. Um, so everybody has eight minutes to see these amazing women. Um, and yeah, I, I, just to point out that if you've been looking at all the Carla promotion activity, you might have seen this photo of these amazing women in their waistcoats and their bright lipstick holding crowbars. And they look so badass. Well, that is these women. So you're going to want to see what they create. So this is Friday Night Bites. And then we're going to, after you watch the video, we're going to welcome you back. And they're going to be in conversation with Victoria. So let's start the screening. Oh, I should mention they're from New Zealand. Here we go. Bother me. What? <laughs> like, what do you call white people when you want to racially think? Mmm. Mmm. Quite low. Whitey? Crack, crack, cracker? Nah. <laughs> One time this guy told me he didn't mind being called a cracker because he'd rather be the whip cracker than the whipped. Typical white response. Um, okay. Why don't we hang out anymore? Like for us, it's chink. Oh. Ching Chong, Gook. For you, I don't know. Cookie? I'm not B.I. Hori then? I'm not Maori either. Ebba? Walk? Whoa! Curry Mucha? Guys! Tao Head! Guys! You know I'm white, eh? What? <laughs> 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 I'm white. No, you're not! <laughs> I can assure you that I am white. Where are you from? Palmerston North? <laughs> no, where are your parents from? You're Palmerston North. See so a picture of your parents. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little weird about this line of questioning. Pax Oak didn't happen. Yeah. You're adopted? No! Your mother had an affair. Why is you're being a little offensive right now. <laughs> but you signed my petition against Yellowface. Yeah, and you defended me against that fuckboy on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, being white doesn't preclude me from being a nice person. Well, you're not just a nice person. You're also, you're like... brown parsley. Yeah, you're basically an awesome brown dude. Yeah, why else would we hang out with you? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I'm flattered that you think I'm good enough to be brown. But, um, the fact is, is that I'm not. You don't... Want to be brown? No, it's not about what I want, it's about what I am, which is white. And, you know, I would never, could never assume to know what it would be like to be a brown person, so... So you've never been called racist things? No. You've never been randomly pulled over by a cop? No. You've never been followed around by a security guard in a shop? Yeah, there was like one time that... I knew it. He's brown passing. <laughs> yeah, but what does that mean? Why does it matter? Stop! <laughs> Stop. Why are you so worked up? It's a compliment. Yeah, is it? Yeah. I just feel weird right now. Why? Well, I kind of feel like this is reverse racism. <gasps> oh my God. Um, reverse racism is a non-word. Yeah. Mm. Racism is a system in history built upon privilege and oppression. Yeah, and you can't reverse that. Yes, but oppression, you... Uh, isn't that what you're doing to me right now? Um, calling you out on a non-word is not oppression, dude. Yeah, but aren't you being bigoted towards me? God, maybe he is white. But you say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, but like, isn't it though? No, I'm still your world bae. Oh, uh, honey, you don't call yourself yeah. that. Yeah. Look, I'm still the same pal you complain about not seeing enough. I'm still the same person you invited around for platonic snuggles and snacks. I'm still your friend. I'm still Arlo. Like, whether I'm white or not. It was a uh, nice seeing you again. We might do this Seriously, again. Seriously, like, okay. but my box wine. Oh, you love you. Okay. See you, babe. I've got my organic popcorn. It's not fun hanging out with you. Look, do we need to talk about this some more? Because I feel like there's some unresolved animosity here. Like, See you next weekend. How is this we talk about Bye. 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 Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Hey, this is weird. Bye. Man, that sucks. I like really liked him. 
Did you see him try to take a snacks pack? So like, I can't believe we didn't see him before. New to it, but the dude do it, get it right. Proof pull up to whoever say you get it right. Man, I miss this great ball thorn. He did bring good snacks. Who do I do me for you? Who even knew who are you? See just outside. It's like I get it right. Do you like legs or breast? Thank you, Bird on the Wire, for providing us free range chicken and delicious salads. It made us feel very yummy in our time. Check out the menu link below. Well, that was great. Um, yeah, subscribe, eat their chicken so you can support them. Um, yeah, I love the white guy getting taken down. It's fantastic. Uh, so we're delighted all the way from New Zealand. I don't have no idea what time it is there. Very late at night. Um, we have the Flat Three Collective, let's say. We have Ali Yu. We have Perlina Lau, JJ Fong, Roseanne Liang, and Carrie Workia. And as I said, they're all joining us from New Zealand. Victoria Thomas is going to take over chatting with them and yeah, I can't wait to hear more about what they do because if that's any indication, we need more of that in our lives. So over to Victoria, if she's here. Yes, pretty in pink. Over to you, Victoria. Good morning to everybody, I guess, in Europe and to everybody joining us from New Zealand. Good evening. How are you guys doing? I'll just wait for all the cameras to come on. I think we have Perlina as well. Great. Hi. Hi. So, Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Carla 2020. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, that was really great. I really loved um, that episode. And I remember when I came across your work. I was very surprised that I had not heard about it before and now I'm completely hooked. But before we sort of start talking about it, I think it'd be a good idea for us to do some introductions of who you are as individuals, and then we'll also talk a bit about who Flat3 is. So we'll start with, uh, I guess, Paulina. Hi, uh, so uh, I'm Paulina, as you just said, uh, from New Zealand, uh, Chinese, Kiwi, uh, usually work in, um, news and broadcast but uh we started flat three productions about seven or eight years ago now um we've all sort of grown up doing acting so we met at a theater show and um came together and yeah formed that company but so i've been doing dabbling between those two things ever since okay thank you and carrie uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, my name is Kiri Warkia. I'm a producer um, in, also in New Zealand um, and I was um, lucky enough to be invited by the Flat 3 team to be, um, I guess, an honorary <laughs> Flat 3 <laughs> member um, and, and work with them and produce some of their work. Um, yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. And Roseanne? Uh, kia ora, I'm, my, I'm the director and um, co-writer of Friday Night Bites. Um, I'm, I'm, China, I'm Chinese New Zealand, I was born, born here, of Hong Kong stock. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, Ali. Uh, kia ora, my name's Ali. I'm from um, Christchurch originally, uh, but I came to New Zealand when I was eight from China. And um, apart from acting, getting into writing, but my day job is actually an optometrist. <laughs> okay, so who are Flat Three? I love your um, tagline that you're dreamers and doers. So what's the dream? Um, <laughs> the dream is not to be. The dream is not to be the only. Um, when we, when we first. When, when these three ladies came to me and decided that they wanted to... Um, so, uh, you know, the story is, is that they, they were three actors who met in a theatre show okay. and were sick of the thin auditions that they were being offered as actors and came to me to write something that they could have some control over because um, we all know that actors have very little control over the roles that they're offered and the roles that they audition for. And, um, and uh, I think that they said to me, we've never seen a comedy 
featuring um, Kiwi Asian women or Asian women. Uh, so let's write one. And the dream is not to be the only ones. The dream is to have a myriad of these things so that we have a lot, we have as much to choose from as there is um, Caucasian choices, I guess. Yeah, I think for us, the dream was simple to be on screen together and not say we're sisters. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah, good. because everything at the time that we were seeing, and this was probably about yeah, seven, seven, eight years ago, all the, all the um, you know, theatre or, or TV shows that were being made, if you ever did see um, an Asian or a Chinese person on screen, they were either talking about being Chinese um, or their characters were, had, you know, just arrived in New Zealand, so they would have had an accent. So we just didn't see ourselves on screen, just being 20-something-year-old Kiwi Asians, you know, trying to hold down a job and, and, and keep your flatmates happy, that sort of thing. So that's where we thought, why don't we make something that has that and add it to the mix? And I guess that sort of probably um, taps in quite well with what we're talking about today, which is about power structures and who get to tell um, our stories, because I can definitely relate to that as somebody of um, African descent living in the UK. Again, I rarely get to see just black British women just being British women having the same exact problems like everybody else. So it was quite refreshing to um, watch your series and sort of see that perspective. Um, why did you choose to do this a web series? Uh, firstly, I was, I was... it's a budget thing. <laughs> yeah. And also being on the internet, um, you're less censured. Um, you can talk from the heart and you'll get immediate response from the audience. What's working, what's not working. And I think that's really gratifying. Yeah, I think also, Ali, I think also um, why a web series is also because um, certain doors were shut, you know, when, when um, these three, you know, these three actresses went to Roseanne and said, you know, we'd like to, um, Roseanne at the time was the only Asian um, Kiwi woman who had written a feature film, two feature films, I think by that stage, maybe. And, um, you know, that's like Roseanne says, it's, that's a pretty terrible <laughs> predicament, like to have that statistic in New Zealand. Um, and I think that these, the, you know, these four women, um, just the act of writing their own content, making their own content, and um, not apologizing for what was in that content, but also making it very real to, to who they were in their lives here in New Zealand, is, was an act of activism in itself um, to say, actually, we're just going to put ourselves on screen and just be real. Um, and I think that, you know, just, just kind of tell the stories we want to tell from our voices. And I think that that was a massive, um, that was a, you know, they really sort of broke the mold. Um, and that was massive at the time. And then to go on to that, you know, now they're making a series for television, which is amazing. Um, but, and more and more um, people of Asian, you know, Kiwi descent in New Zealand are coming through making those things and, and these women have led the way, you know, that's, I mean, that's pretty great. And the doors are opening. They're opening the doors. And also just to add that point, um, Kiri actually did produce the first web series in New Zealand Auckland Days and yeah. we talk, uh, <laughs> like, took inspiration from that. So our marketing so story is, we're the <laughs> web series of New Zealand. <laughs> But it kind of came full circle for me because I was already <laughs> fangirling about Roseanne way before I even made that one. So, <laughs> that was cool. that's good. and I guess that's what I was sort of trying to touch on without making any assumptions about what the media landscape was like in New Zealand. Because one of the comments that I've heard from people who work in the world of web series is that in web series, diversity is not a problem. There's just so much diversity of voices and stories being told because the curators and the gatekeepers are not there. And I guess for me, that's one of the things I've always sort of talked about when we um, talk about marginalization or people not seeing um, themselves represented, that it's about the willingness of the powers that be to actually allow um, these voices. So how did you find that transition from web series to, um, to a TV show? Did you feel that you lost any creative freedom or do you think that you were able to just be your true selves? 
I, f I feel like, you know, it is really great that, that you know, we, back when we were starting to make web series, we were inspired by shows like Broad City and Awkward Black Girl. And, um, and, and, and so um, that's really great. But when you look at the budgets of what those shows had, what our show had certainly was a fraction. Minute for minute, we were getting something like, you know, less than half of what minute for minute tele broadcast television was getting. So um, unfortunately, more money, more problems, right? And, yes. and so we have to answer to more people who are more risk averse and are more afraid of, um, of risk taking. And um, I'm not saying that I, I'm, well, the current TV show that we're working on now, we've been lucky to have the support of a really great, you know, public broadcaster and um, public funding. Um, but the road to there has, you know, has been, uh, it's, it's been hard to be able to prove ourselves. We had to do, you know, five seasons of this, of our web series of the flat three world, um, to be able to be trusted with this budget and we'll have to do well with this TV series, which is low budget TV to be yeah. trusted with a proper TV budget in the future. Yeah, and that's one of the comments that we hear all the time that as minorities, we don't get the opportunity to be um, mediocre. We have to be excellent to be given access to the exact same thing because if something does not work or is not perfect immediately, we're told that that's proof that it doesn't work. So are you feeling any pressure right now going into this season? Well, it's interesting. I think that the topic i was just gonna say i think the topic says it all it's not you it's the system <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but how are you handling that pressure how are you handling sort of the new dynamics and do you feel like you really have to prove yourself because it's that thing where we always have to work harder than everybody else and everything just always has to be perfect and really deliver over and above average for us to get access to the same opportunities so what are you thinking going to this now how how do you think you would react if you don't sort of, um, I guess, meet the expectations that they have set for you, even though you might be doing incredibly well? I think the pressure was always inevitable. We knew that going in and taking, you know, applying for the funding and, and then getting the funding. But I think also, and I thought about this recently, and I spoke about it with Ali, you know, we, if they turn around and say, oh, it's not perfect and, and you know, it's a failure, will they, you know, the other people have been making TV shows in New Zealand have had decades to get it wrong and then get it right. So in some ways it's an, it's an impossible, um, it's impossible to be perfect or to, to be amazing. And in one, you know, not even a year mm -hmm. to match up to 30, 40 years of television making. So I think not that I, I resent that idea, but it is very unfair and, and they need to, you need to be given time, you know, to improve and to figure out, what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, mm. it's a ridiculous burden. And I would mm. also say, um, uh, Perlina, that um, there, there, are, there are lots of those production companies still getting it wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> That's the thing, and, and we see it all over the world. You know, I'm pretty sure there are lots of African-Americans who would say the same thing in minorities in so many other places. But how has it been received by the Asian community in New Zealand? Because again, at times, when we don't get to see so many um, representations of ourselves, when there is one, everybody has an expectation about how it, they should be presented. So what has been the, um, I guess, the feedback from your communities? I'm very interested to how it's gonna be received by our community when our show comes <laughs> out. <laughs> Just because we're not a monolith, you know, yeah. and, um, uh, it's been a lot of support from our community, but of course, privately, people will talk to us and be like, hey, I disagreed with you on this point that you made on that episode. And that's totally cool. I love having discussions like that. And I think we should be open and honest about those discussions. Um, and we'd rather be having yeah. those discussions than not. You know, the fact that we can make content and people are happy to talk about it or even open to sharing their feedback with us. That's what we want. And that's great. Um, but yeah, the show's not due out to hopefully sometime next year. So yeah, to wait and see. Mm -hmm. I would also I wanted say to give an ex oh sorry. You go, you go, Ro. Um, I, I wanted to I wanted to just give a short example from from Flat Three was that actually we find that the Asian community makes us better 
in a way where they hold us to task. Um, there was one situation where, you know, the first series of flat three, we made literally on no money. Like we, we put in our own money to the tune of a thousand bucks to make an entire series. And so we got a lot of favors from our friends and actors who happened to be white. And so a lot of our love interests were white people. And um, when we showed this to our to the Asian community, they asked us questions. They said, why are all the love interests white? And we said, well, that's not our fault. You know, we, we, we were just doing it on the cheap. We didn't have enough money. We, you know, we just had Caucasian friends who, who did it for free. And then we started realizing, actually, we bear a, a different responsibility. You know, if we really care about representation, then we will work that much harder. It, it was laziness on our part and not um, ma malicious laziness. It just, we just hadn't thought about it. And then we, we went through the process of making sure that our love interests and, you know, our, our other characters were, were diverse. And, and it's funny that we didn't, we, you know, we had to, we had to be held to task by our own community, which is, I think, a really valuable thing. But I think at times when you're just sort of trying to get stuff off the ground as filmmakers, you're just grateful for any help and support <laughs> that you can get. Mm -hmm. And you already feel when you're doing it as minorities, as though you're even breaking the mold. So I don't think you ever think that you would fall into that trap of potentially, um, perpetuating the same stereotypes that the uh, majorities do. And I think that's always like an interesting thing when we have to hold ourselves accountable. So how are you guys holding yourself accountable now that things are changing for you? Victoria, before we move on to that, I just wanted to go back and say there's another element to this, which is also building building audiences, you know, building yeah. new audiences. Because, or, because when you start out for something like this, like something like Flat 3, audiences had never seen that before. Like we hadn't <laughs> you know, um, Kiwi, Asian um, women who were New Zealanders, you know, born in New Zealand, um, making these shows. This is, so, so it's, so it's a, you are, there is an element of kind of bringing an audience along, um, showing them, and, and, and also I would say for a community to see themselves on screen and go, oh, okay, this is new for me. Um, there, there is an element of that. And so I think that that has to come into it too when we're sort of moving along, you know, um, telling, telling these stories. It, there is, while it might seem like, oh, well, nobody watches. It's like, yeah, but we're, we're teaching, we're building new audiences. And the system has been geared to only one audience for the entire, you know, in, in, in its entirety since time immemorial. Like, so, so that is also um, something to overcome. It's another challenge, I think. Yeah, because I guess at times as well, people probably don't tune into these channels because they don't expect to see themselves reflected. I know that there are lots of British channels that I don't really watch. I probably watch more American TV, even though I, I live in the UK. So I guess also earlier on today, we were talking about intersectionality. So has your revolution in a lot of ways sparked more demands in New Zealand from other minority groups about seeing themselves reflected in the media and entertainment in New Zealand? Could you possibly repeat that question? <laughs> no. Obviously, you, you guys are sort of um, Asian and New Zealand, and you're putting forward your own um, narratives. But yeah. are you sort of getting any pressure from other minority groups who perhaps don't see themselves in um, New Zealand television right. thinking, we also should be included? Why are we not here? Um, do you feel any obligation to represent for other minorities or have you sort of inspired other people to also come forward with their own narratives and push to get it made? Yeah, we've definitely seen a, 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 gr a growing number of different, like just a couple of years ago, I saw very few South, um, South Asian stories or South Asian creatives being in the forefront and that's really blossomed in the last um, couple of years. So, in this time with our television show, I think when we were casting, we were especially conscious of being representative of the New Zealand demographic as much as possible, yeah. Yeah, because there's all that responsibility to represent for everybody, which I don't think we can ever achieve. Mm -hmm. So we're running out of time and we only have five minutes left. I'd love to just ask all of you, what's the one thing that you know now that you wish you knew before you started? And I'll get everybody to say something. So I'll probably start off with Roseanne. 
Oh my god. Um, <laughs> what, what's something that I know now that I wish I, um, um, that that most people are faking it till they make it, yeah. and, and that uh, <laughs> and that and that confidence confidence get. I know I know this is so cliche, but it's that it's that and I and I, and I, hate, and I kind of hate hate also reducing things to a pithy thing but you, you know how they're like um, I wish I could walk into a room with the confidence of a mediocre white man yeah. you know like um, we we bear the burden of responsibility as women of color we we want to do the right thing we want to do we want to be excellent but we also want to be um, uh, incredibly sensitive to 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 everyone and this this is where intersectionality comes in we want to be we want to um, pay it forward right yeah. but but that burden of responsibility can also really stifle us and so when we walk into a room and we start you know thinking about all these things and putting all our pressures on ourselves would a more confident caucasian person do the same when they walk into a room and does it make us look like we don't know like we we have doubt we have self-doubt and uh, and that can be a real problem so it's, a, it's about reading the room it's about not being overconfident to the point of hubris but uh, or arrogance, but also being able to back ourselves and being like, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, if you if you want me to tell the story, which I think people are telling us that they do, and not just us, others like us, um, we want to be part of myriad stories coming forward. We don't just want it to be us. Um, then then we we know our we know our shit, you know, we know our shit. <laughs> And you're doing it, so um, Perlina, what's the one thing that you wish you knew? Um, it's, it's a little bit similar to a Roseanne, but yeah, when we first started doing the web series, we sort of were trying to actually get away from the, the race chat, I suppose, you know, by depicting ourselves as normal sort of Kiwis. But actually in doing that, we stepped back and allowed people to step in and actually comment on the race stuff. And I suppose, you know, it's only been in the last few years maybe at the most four or five years that diversity has become a real thing for even Hollywood and now you can see a ripple effect around the world where people have to consciously you know and be more inclusive so in some ways if I you know if I could have seen four or five years into the future and knew that everyone was going to be talking about it I think maybe I don't know I would have, yeah, we would have had more confidence to back ourselves and go on with a bit more gusto I suppose Okay, and Ali, what about you? Um, ask for more. Don't be afraid to ask for more. <laughs> I think a lot of us are like, yes, we'll take the crumbs because this is the only chance we'll get. But you don't know until you ask. <laughs> yeah, well, my mom always says the only thing that people can do when you ask for more is say no. You know, or exactly. you want. Yeah. nobody's going to kill you for asking. So last but not least, Kerry, what about you? What's the one thing that you wish you knew before? Um, I think, I think um, it touches on what we were just talking about earlier, which is, which is um, and I think Roseanne, you were referring it to, it to it as well in terms of the community holding you to task. And I think um, what, I, what I feel like I've grown to know more now than I did before is about um, that consciousness, bringing things to your, to your consciousness. Um, you know, like who, who's missing from the table? Why are they missing from the table? How do I bring them to the table? Um, just bringing, having those things in your conscious thought um, means that you can do better um next time and with every show and it might just be a little step forward a little bit better but it's a it's 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 better <laughs> i think that's what i've learned along the way okay well thank you guys so much for joining us it was really amazing talking to you and good luck with the tv show thank and you. it's the first thank of you. many thank you all right thank you kia ora. all right then, guys. thanks for yeah. having us bye 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 bye, bye. Thank you, Victoria. Great conversation. And thank you, everybody joining us from New Zealand. That was really fascinating <clears throat> to hear what you've been able to achieve. And we look forward to more. And just to mention, if anybody is um, curious about more content from the Flat Three gang, they have a YouTube channel where there's got 140 videos. Yep. So that'll keep you busy for the rest of the day. Uh, not today, because you're watching Carla, but another day you can watch some of that. Um, but yeah, really interesting what they've been achieving in New Zealand. 